Hi, my name is Alyssa. If you're new here, hey, it's nice to meet you. And if you're coming back, hey friend, it's good to see you again. In 2021, I'm a professional curve model, but it hasn't always been like this for me. And today I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my story. And I thought for this story, we could sit on my porch together, maybe have a little tea and just chat. I'm sure you've read the title, but I still wanna add in a content warning for anyone who feels this may be triggering for them. Feel free to swipe away. I understand that I'm supporting you every step of the way. I won't be showing any pictures of my body from when I was actively struggling with restrictive eating because for me, I found that it's still a form of body checking and it's still an unhealthy behavior for me. It's still a way for me to feel validated in how sick I was and how much my body transformed from then to now. And it makes me feel like I must be recovered, right? I gained all this weight and we'll talk more about that later. But the truth is that my journey and story are not the only valid journey or story. And I would never wanna make anyone question if they were really sick because they didn't look like me. Folks in larger bodies who have restrictive eating disorders are valid. Folks who don't lose weight when they're struggling with a restrictive eating disorder are valid. People who struggle with binge eating disorders are valid. And we all deserve recovery. Please, please, please promise me that you will never think I'm not sick enough to deserve help. I've been there myself before and it is just such a lie. There is no thin line in the sand where you finally deserve to recover. In high school and my first year of college, I struggled with a restrictive eating disorder. I didn't realize what it was at the time. I just knew that I felt so incredibly overwhelmed by this feeling that I had no control over my life. I felt like I had to restrict everything that was going into my body, and whenever I ate, I would think about what I needed to do to work it off. Most of the time, this behavior wasn't actually about my body. I just thought it was what people did. Diet culture was such a huge part of my life that I didn't even realize that there were people who didn't think this way. I had severe body dysmorphia standing at a tall height of 5 foot 9, and I thought I was huge. I was tall my whole life, and I hit 5'9 at around 12 years old. I would hear tons of comments like, well, it's gonna be hard to find you a boyfriend, or do you need a sunroof in your car? And at that age, I was very anxious and quiet with anyone who wasn't very close to me. And being told I was taking up too much space with my height weighed really heavily on me. I didn't wanna stand out. I just wanted to be a normal kid and blend in and be like everybody else. Now, when I look at pictures of myself at that time in my life, it stuns me how warped my perception of reality was. I genuinely felt huge, and I was always terrified and hyper-aware that people were staring at the parts of me that stuck out. But the truth is that those parts were almost non-existent, and I was extremely thin. For me, food was a form of control. It was something to do when I felt like I couldn't do anything about my life circumstances. It made me feel like I had power over at least one thing even when I felt so incredibly powerless. In middle school, whenever I was struggling with severe anxiety and depression, I would search weird weight loss remedies like drinking cayenne pepper with lemon juice and other disgusting hacks to help you slim down. And I thought this was what everyone did. I constantly saw magazines and ads promoting products to help you lose that stubborn 15 pounds. And I thought it was totally normal and that everyone was always looking to lose 15 pounds. In middle school, one of my closest friends at the time would constantly talk about her weight. We often went shopping together and she would frequently call herself fat despite being a size zero and much smaller than me. In a lot of ways, I took on some of her own body insecurities to myself. I thought to myself, if she's judging herself this harshly, she must be judging me much more. When I was 16 years old, I went through a traumatic experience at a summer camp. I won't go into detail here, but you can Google UNCSA sexual abuse if you're interested in learning more about the case. I ended up being diagnosed with PTSD from this three weeks of harm. Those three weeks were the hardest time for me with my eating. All of those control issues came up stronger than ever before. I had no control over my body and what was happening to it, and even my mealtimes were with the person who was harming me. And my body completely shut down, I ate nothing but fruit for that entire three weeks. When I got home, luckily I was able to be with my family and have some lovely meals prepared with all my favorite foods. I have always been a lover of food, make no mistake there. Fettuccine Alfredo is one of my favorites. So I ate lots of pasta with cheese and butter and was able to get back to a healthy weight. In college, I studied musical theater. And in a major where your body is used as a tool for dance, there was also a lot of harsh criticisms about how your body looked. There is a lot of discrimination and prejudice in acting and what bodies get to play what kinds of roles. When I was that tall kid, I never got to play the ingenue. I played the mother, the teacher. And we rarely get to see fat folks as the main character. Often, they are regulated to being the funny best friend or the humorous sidekick. Very rarely are folks in larger bodies portrayed as being desirable. And as somebody who came into this program in a very thin body, my body was what got the praise. 
My talents such as singing and acting were harshly criticized, but my body was praised. A lot of women in this program used an app called MyFitnessPal where you can set a calorie goal for the day and enter in food as you eat it. And this became a big struggle for me because apps like these don't take into consideration what kind of calories you're consuming. There is a big difference between consuming 800 calories of chicken versus 800 calories of a white chocolate mocha from Starbucks. And anyone who knows me knows that coffee is not optional to me. It is non-negotiable. I am getting that coffee in the morning. And so I started replacing my meals with coffee and I had my calorie limit set to something ridiculous. Now we're getting to the part in the story where you might be wondering, Alyssa, how did you get out of this cycle? And let me tell you something, I have always been stubborn. If you tell me that I can't do something, I will try to prove you wrong. And at some point the comments about my body went from being positive to less than helpful. It stopped being, you have such beautiful long legs, and started becoming, your body is the only marketable thing about you, and you are only being casted because of your body. And I had struggled for so long with this being unspoken, and when it was unspoken, I submitted to it. I was happy to conform my body to these standards, but the second that it was said out loud, it finally hit me how messed up that was. It finally clicked in my head that I am worth so much more than my body size, and that my value comes not from my thinness, but from my humanity. And so I stopped counting calories. And honestly, I swung largely in the other direction. I gained a lot of weight and I started eating a lot of food. I would eat two Chick-fil-A chicken mini meals every morning because I was hungry. My body was finally learning what it felt like to be continually nourished and to be able to rely on that nourishment coming along because it had never had that before. And I was hungry all the time. And after a while, I got up to about 200 pounds. Now, about four years later, I do have a more healthy relationship with food, but I'm going to be honest, it's not perfect. I'm still on this journey and those thoughts are still there sometimes. I don't feel like I wanna shrink my body, but sometimes if I accidentally skip lunch, I'll have thoughts like, you could keep going, you could just not eat all day. Because eating disorders are competitive, and I have to actively push back on those thoughts and remind myself, but that's not what I want to do. I don't want to go a full day without eating. And because eating disorders are competitive, I don't want to go into the details of what happened to my health during that time. But I do want to say this. One of the most dangerous things about eating disorders is the fact that it will never be enough. It didn't matter how low that number on the scale got. I always wished it was lower. I was never going to be satisfied until I completely disappeared, until I became invisible, because that's what I truly wanted. The root cause of what I went through was all about not feeling worthy of taking up space. And the way I made progress in that journey is by reminding myself that I do deserve to take up space, that I am worthy. If it feels impossible to recover for your health, do it to spite someone. Do it to say fuck you to these men who have created entire industries around profiting off of our insecurities. Do it to prove them wrong, to show them that they can't shame you into buying their product. When I was 14, a guy told me, no girl above a certain number of pounds could ever be a 10. My heart dropped out of my stomach and I felt devastated. Now I plant my feet firmly on the truth that my worth is not valued by how sexually appealing I am to men. And it was that mentality that got me through all of the comments that I had always feared. My professor telling me that I wasn't marketable at my new weight of 200 pounds. Hate comments I get on a daily basis on my Instagram of put down the fork. And even the people who said I looked better when I was actively in a eating disorder. That is a whole nother level of evil that I can't even imagine. <laughs> And I'm so incredibly thankful that I had this transformation before ever entering into the modeling industry. Because this is an industry where eating disorders aren't just common, they are the norm. It is more surprising and rare for a model to not have an eating disorder. I walked to my very first runway show this summer for Twin City Fashion Week. Models were there all day, getting into hair, makeup, doing fittings, having our final dress rehearsal, which we had to have same day because of COVID, and then waiting while the audience arrived. I had a... <laughs> I had arrived at 9 a.m. and at 3 p.m. I announced that I was starving and I grabbed a protein bar and the photographer said to me, oh, that's okay, you'll burn it off out there. These types of comments happen every single day in the industry. And I wanna remind you that there is only one way to achieve that level of fashion model thin that you see at New York Fashion Week. Be born that way. No, seriously, these standards have caused numerous deaths, but there is a better way. Body inclusivity is not a trend, it's a movement for change. Hold companies accountable for the models that they choose to use in their campaigns. And make some noise when you see brands and runway shows that are doing something that you appreciate. Remember, we vote with our dollar. Victoria's Secret had no problem being openly transphobic until it affected their bottom line. Once it started costing them money, 
then they changed their tune. And if you've always had a dream of modeling, just know that I am cheering you on. Soon you could be hearing, I have never seen myself represented before you. I'm tired of unrealistic body standards too, but I know that we can make a change. Thank you for listening to my story. Get down there, click that like button, and leave me a comment with your thoughts. As always, I love and appreciate you so, so much, and I'll see you next week. Bye, friend! Bye-bye! I won't be showing any pictures of my body from when I was in active struggle. I would search weird... I would search weird weight loss remedies. <laughs> Say that 50 times fast. I would search weird weight loss remedies. <laughs> I would eat two Chick-fil-A mini 